Hello everybody and welcome to The War Room. This one is for this weekend's UFC main event and what a fight this is going to be. Sadiq Youssef against Edson Barbosa. Um, okay, quick tell of the tape then we'll get into it. So uh, Sadiq Youssef, 13 wins and 2 losses. Edson Barbosa, 23 wins and 11 losses. Of course, a lot more experience. Now, as far as their knockout ratios, the uh, Sadiq Youssef is a power puncher, but Edson Barbosa has a lot more uh, KOs to his credit. You've got to remember, of course, that some of those are from low kicks as well as from spinning head kicks. So there's there's a lot of variety to Edson Barbosa's game, which can work for him and against him, and we'll get into that. So of 23 wins, Edson Barbosa's got 14 knockouts and one submission, which is an anaconda back in 2009. I think he might have invented the anaconda so far back. So it's been a while since Edson Barbosa's landed a submission. Uh, Sadiq Youssef, on the other hand, he's got six knockouts of 13 wins, so just under 50%, and he's got one guillotine. But the interesting thing for that is... The guillotine was in his last fight. So I always go, okay, well, this fight has got one submission way back in their history. So what's the likelihood of them landing one now? It's pretty slim. And then you see a fighter that's not had a submission up until their most recent fight. And then you start thinking, okay, well, they're building out a part of their game. So we can expect more submission attempts from Sadiq Youssef. That's just something I'm going to quick throw out there. Uh, just before we get into it, uh, our friends at Vive have sent me some of these awesome protein bars. I've been eating these for a while. And then I'm sitting there one day eating away and thinking to myself, these are fantastic. I wonder where they are. They're right around the corner from where we live. So we sent them an email and they sent us some lovely protein bars. So make sure you check these out. They've set up a code for us. It's Outlaw10. Uh, the website is Eat Vive. And um, if you spend over £20, you'll get free shipping as well. Um, I, I advise you all to get the mixed box. You've got a couple of different flavors in here. The hazelnut one is the best. The peanut butter ones are close second. But if you're going to order them, make sure you get the, uh, the, 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 the better brownie as well. Chocolate orange. I mean... What a combination. Anyway, um, so regarding this fight, Edson Barbosa's got a very, very good long-range game. We know this. We've seen him, the way that he moves, the speed that he can kick at, his ability to target certain areas as well, multiple stoppages with low kicks, as well as, of course, the one that we all remember, which is the spinning head kick against Terry Etim, which we see in, in pretty much every UFC highlight reel still to this day. So... For me, Edson Barbosa, because he's had quite a storied career and, and I've kind of been like I was what I was an active fighter and then an active commentator at the same, t you know, from one after the next. And he's been consistent on the UFC roster throughout that time. He's he's always been someone that I paid attention to because of his striking skill set, because of his capability. But in my head, I've kind of I was thinking about it today and I'm like, OK, well, for me, Edson Barbosa's kind of got a bit of a timeline of like the basic things that I remember about his career. I remember him coming into the UFC with with this ferocious low kick game. Then I remember him landing that head kick knockout against Terry which which of course is, you know, is a very familiar one because we've seen it a lot. Then I remember Khabib closing him down like he had complete disregard for his striking skill set and and being able to be very successful doing it. Then I remember Gaethje doing it and being able to put hands on him and really hurt him. So for me, it's always looked like Edson Barbosa has been really good if he's got the space to work. But if he comes up against someone that is able or or brave enough to close distance on such a lethal individual, they're, they're able to do it if after they've walked through the fire a little bit. And and what we've now seen from Edson Barbosa is if, if you look at his game, he's now evolved. So he's got more of a... He's got more weapons at close range. Like if you look at what he did in his last fight against Quarantia, the, the the knee that he landed was just beautifully timed. Of course, he was able to re Quarantillo because he was he was level changing quite consistently up against the fence. DC picked up on it in the commentary. It was it was quite a consistent habit that that he was that he was level changing. So Barbosa was able to catch him with that. But I still would say that if he's put under enough pressure, he's going to struggle. And this is where Sadiq Yusuf comes into play because he's kind of at the other end of his career, right? He's still in the process of discovering the fighter that he is. He's added a guillotine to his record, first submission of his career. We, we, we've got to anticipate that he's going to bring new things to this fight as well. But how is that going to play out against Edson Barbosa? Now, the thing with Sadiq Yusuf is... He's, he's a thunderous puncher. I think it was his, was it his first or second fight I was on commentary for. And it was... It was a it was a strange hang on, where is it? Where is it? It was against uh Suman Mokhtarian in Australia. And the reason why it stuck out in my mind is because it 
for me, it was the it, it was the first time I felt a fight was stopped because of the volume of the punches, and not volume as in the amount, the volume as in the as in the smacking sound. <laughs> like it was. Hang on, let me get the, let me get the information because it was. I'll give you a little story, just one second. So where were we? John Gunn, Dan Hard, Dan Hardy on comms. There we go. Adelaide, yeah. So so this was like, I don't know, like eight o'clock in the morning or something like that. Like people were still kind of tasting their breakfast, and these fights were going on. And Sadiq Yusuf had backed Mokhtarian up against the fence and was just unleashing these horrendous power punches. Not all of them getting through, but everything that landed sounded like like Thor's hammer. And and it, it just to, to me it kind of sent like the referee was standing there going oh my goodness this is like this is a, a, a an outrageous onslaught of punches I'm going to have to step in and save the guy, um you know Mokhtarin after you know you watch the fight back and he's leaned up against the fence and he you know he would would like the fight to have continued but sitting octagon side and hearing the thud on those punches it made me realize how much force this guy can generate and then when you watch his fights you can tell that he has the confidence that he can put people away because of the way that he moves into range now what i will say is both of these guys can slow down for a couple of different reasons one i think because they're both very dynamic and plyometric uh, fast powerful fighters but second of all i think because they both are very very close to the limit when it comes to weight cutting like if Edson Barbosa, when he was a lightweight, if he was going to go one way or another in weight classes, I would have always put money on him going to welterweight. Like you look at other fighters that have stepped up to welterweight, and you think to yourself, well, you know, they not they weren't as muscular as Edson Barbosa at lightweight. So to think him going down to featherweight must be a push for him, especially because what how old is Barbosa now? He he must be he must be in his later thirties, right? Hang on, hang on. I need I need to be able to control this with my mind so it's quicker. Yeah, 37, right? So, you know, he's taken some battle damage. He's been stopped a couple of times. Like, you've got to think if Yusuf is able to put pressure on him and catch him with something, he could potentially hurt him and keep him hurt. You know, like Giga Chikadze did, just keep on him, keep him hurt. That pressure, that punching power, that confident surge that he'll get if Sadiq Yusuf lands something and hurts him, that's going to be very, very difficult for Edson Barbosa to survive. What Barbosa is very good at, though, is moving laterally and stinging people as they're closing into range. So if if Sadiq Yusuf can't stay in that close range, where, of course, he's always at danger, if he can't stay in that close range, then he's going to have to keep walking through the fire to keep pressure on Edson Barbosa, which means he's always going to have to deal with the low kicks, the body kicks, the head kicks, the front kicks and teeps, and then, of course, what we've seen in his last fight, the knees. What else? Um... So we've talked about Sadiq Yusuf's guillotine in his last fight. Now, if if he if he is able to get to Edson Barbosa, if he is able to hit him and hurt him and wrap his neck up, then that might be another way that we see this fight finished. Edson Barbosa getting hurt and going down might be scrambling back to his feet and leave his neck open. And Sadiq Yusuf, with his confidence from his most recent submission win and with his growing confidence of his grappling game, he might see the opportunity and, and jump on a submission. And and who knows that might be the thing that saves Edson Barbosa, depending on on whether the uh, the you know the rounds running out of time or not. Like all of these things are possibilities that I've I've kind of played through in my brain. What most likely I think is going to happen is that Sadiq Yusuf's going to try and close him down and take his kicking game away. Like that's if if I'm Yusuf going into this fight with Barbosa, I don't want to be playing kickboxing with him. I want to be inside his kicking range and being ready to to block and counter with heavy hands. Because that's that's what I bring to the table here. And at any point Sadiq Yusuf needs to, he can then close him down against the fence and grab a hold of him. And he can, you know, see this is where he has to manage his, 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 his energy because Edson Barbosa is going to be clever here. He's got good takedown defense. So Barbosa up against the fence defending takedowns, he's going to be much more energy efficient based on his experience than Sadiq Yusuf will be based on the fact that he's 15 fights into his career and Edson Barbosa's what 34 into his um that's something to keep in mind because if this fight does start to go long then it's going to start to move back in Edson Barbosa's favor because I feel like he'll stay crisper with his striking because he's a more seasoned veteran he's also got a kickboxing record of 25 and 3 with 22 knockouts <laughs> which is a lot of lot of additional experience that he brings in on top of his MMA career um a few things uh, so I mean, hang on where, where's the stats I've got stats written down somewhere 
Have I, have I got the same ones? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so average fight times kind of similar. Of, of course, Edson Barbosa has had a had a greater volume of fights. So you know, his experience does does factor in a great deal in this fight. Slightly lower strikes landed per minute uh, for Edson Barbosa, but slightly. Uh, uh, is that right? Hang on a minute. Let me get my stats right. No, hang on. Let me go straight off the website. So. Strikes landed per minute, 5.29 for Sadiq Yusuf, so slightly ahead of Edson Barbosa and slightly better striking accuracy. You can see the defense is pretty much uh, pretty much the same, but then, again, we've always got to factor in the fact that Edson Barbosa's fought at a very high level against some really, really tough fighters. And Sadiq Yusuf has fought good fighters as well, of course, but the level is, is different, for sure. Um what else? What else? What else? So takedown, uh, takedown average, um, slightly in favor of Edson Barbosa. Twelve percent takedown accuracy for Sadiq Yusuf. I don't expect him to be looking for takedowns. I expect him to be holding him against the fence and hustling them and wrestling him. But I think that the the opportunity to attack a neck will most likely be um, if Barbosa's hurt or if he's trying to buy time or level change or something. Yeah. Barbosa's takedown offense is good, seventy-five percent. We know he can scramble. We we do also know that he might run out of run out of steam if he is forced to scramble. So potentially that could be something that Sadiq Youssef brings to the table here. Um, Youssef does get hurt though. This is the one thing that that if I'm watching this fight, I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, I, I saw him get hurt against uh, Arnold Allen. I saw him get hurt. Um, who was his last fight? Um, not Shanice. No, it was uh, Caceres caught him and hurt him. Was it Feely caught him and hurt him in the first round as well? Like, because he's so eager to close distance, because he's so single-minded on what he's capable of, like, as long as I land this punch, the fight's going to be won. Sometimes he, he can disregard what's coming back, and that's something that he can't do against Edson Barbosa. Because Barbosa is not going to be putting himself in positions where he doesn't have options to fire back. This is the thing with Edson Barbosa, his experience and his striking ability. He's going to be moving at angles where he's going to be prepared to fire something back as Yusuf follows him. So if he's if Yusuf is, is has got like a hard headed style of cutting the, the octagon down, then he could potentially be walking onto stuff. And we have seen him hurt and we have seen him dropped. And we can't underestimate Edson Barbosa's striking. He, he is just he is a, an elite level striker all around. He has got some battle damage. He is older in his career. He is cutting a lot of weight to get to this weight class. There are certain things that do work against him. But experience is very valuable. And Sadiq Youssef, if he's forced to work hard, if he's forced to work for clinch positions, he's work, you know, kicked in the body, kneed in the body, they're all things that are going to allow Edson Barbosa to start to work his way into this fight if he is losing the first couple of rounds. Um it's gonna be a gonna be a really fun fun back and forth. This one is. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of both of these guys, but I just I feel like they're at different stages of their career. And and Edson Barbosa is kind of you know, at some point we're gonna we're gonna see him take his gloves off and leave him in the center of the octagon. And I've felt like he's been close a couple of times. Um, we'll see how this fight goes. He's uh he he's, he's very talented, but I do feel like he's he's certainly on the downturn of his career. And Sadiq Youssef, as I said. When I was octagon side, I, I can like I can literally feel the, the 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 power of the punches still. Like it was, they were just a thud. Go and watch the fight back. It was uh, it was a hell of a hell of a way to introduce yourself to UFC fans. Make sure you check out uh, Vive protein bars. They are fantastic. I eat them all the time, and these guys have been kind enough to send us a couple of boxes of these, which I'm going to be eating all week this week. Uh, eat Vive if you use the uh, the code. Uh, or Outlaw 10, Outlaw 10, Jamie will put it on the screen anyway. If you use the code Outlaw 10, you'll get 10% off. And if you spend over £20, you'll get free shipping. So get on, get on board because they're delicious. Enjoy these fights and I'll see you next time.